Hello everyone and welcome to Harv's World for episode 19 of the Pacific Northwest. So I'm just taking care of our apple trees here quickly this morning. Just going to give them some water. And we are going to get down to business. I got some things I want to add to the farm today. Um, going to be interesting. We're going to get some more storage in place. We need a place to uh, do some repairs when we need it. And if you'll recall, to get this apple orchard in, I uh, I had to sell off our seed huts, so we need a replacement for those too. And we're going to take care of all that today, and then we're going to look at some new technology that uh, has come on the market. It's going to be really interesting. I can't wait to give it a try. But first, first, you know, there's just some, there's always some kind of maintenance to do on the farm. Got to try to keep up with everything. And I'm just going to finish off watering these trees really quickly. It's not going to take long. I think I got that one. There we go. You know, if you're ever ever using the apple trees, orange trees, I think is a part of the pack too. You can always oops. Anyway, like I was saying, you know, they don't take much water and you only really have to do this every couple of days. So it's not that big of a deal. Just get this parked back up over here by the barn. <laughs> oh, so it's going to be one of those days. I'll be crashing into everything. And, of course, because this is a dairy farm, primarily, we mostly farm to uh, keep our cows going these days, we are going to take a look at these bad boys because they have been producing like crazy. We finally got enough... Uh, TMR in to start showing up in the feed trough. We're nowhere close to being full, but we're getting closer. Now, as far as uh, our milk production goes, yes, Bessie, as far as the milk production goes, we've got 60,000 liters already filled in this tank. You can see right there. And looking at our cows, we have got another almost 54,000 liters ready to go but milk prices just are not doing what I want them to do I mean we're only at 21.99 and I know we can get maybe another five hundred dollars per 1,000 liters so I'm not gonna sell until I have to and then we can also see we've got almost a quarter of a million liters of manure it's really starting to pile up the slurry was really piling up but I did drain some off and put it in our our storage facility so that's not an issue but we do we do need to start managing up the uh, the manure pile here and that's why I bought these conveyors now if you've never used conveyors before um, you walk up to them you enter them just like you would any vehicle and you actually have to start the engine just like you would any vehicle and then on the ground pickup this this uh, particular conveyors for picking up you know stuff that's on the ground obviously you have to unfold it and then you can drive it around just like any other vehicle so you just drive it to where you want it where you think it's gonna gonna pick up and I'm gonna try here I'm not completely convinced that's gonna work right but then the big conveyor is exactly the same way now this one this one you're not going to unfold, um, but you are going to start it, and then it will drive and steer just like any other. And with this one, and I actually think I want to turn this around just a little bit. Man, my voice is all kinds of cracking today. Anyway, what I was saying was, um, this one attaches to the ground pickup. These units are meant to be used in conjunction with one another. Um, do they have to be? No, they don't have to be. 
if you've got a small enough trailer or you have some other other device for uh, for moving um, the manure or whatever you're picking up off of the small conveyor then it's not too much of an issue but you pull up to the small ground pickup you attach to it just like you would a trailer and then you have control over your your uh, primary conveyor then you have control over your primary conveyor and that is as high as it will go but it also extends as you can see here you can extend it quite a long ways and then once it's extended you can you can still raise and lower it up which makes complete sense but anyway you can do that right now I don't think we need quite so much in fact it's probably up too high as it stands but and then at this point you would turn it on I hope this will um, operate the way it's supposed to Yep, there we go. So now you can see that manure is running up the belt. Like so. And at this point, we can bring any trailer under this and it will start loading manure. So we are all set there. And at another time, I am going to move most of that manure down to the biogas plant and sell it off. We're not going to do that today because I've got other fish I want to fry. All of our fields are ready to be planted with the exception of the corn field. The corn field is actually ready to uh, to turn into chaff for more silage. That's going to be a big part of what we do today. The first thing I need to get on the farm is a way, is a way to buy seeds and I think this will work out for us. There are many options out there these days, but I like this one. It's a nice multi-silo. And I felt like placing it right here between these two two lanes and in between our fields, you know, would give our equipment access to it. And we'll get it right up here on the edge of the culvert. I think I'm just going to put it right there. Yeah, I like the look of that. Um, and I've got the the big case with our cedar already. I'm going to try it out. So I should be able to just pull right up to it, right? Oh, I should probably open the thing first, huh? and we can fill with seed oh that was fast that fills feels that fills really fast now this is supposed to do fertilizer also what am I missing Oh, it doesn't do dry fertilizer, or it doesn't do liquid fertilizer. So, that being the case, I am going to need a separate liquid fertilizer fill, and we have an option for that. I just have to find it. Hang on a second. Now, when I looked at that, it kind of indicated that I could use it for anything any type of seed or fertilizer but apparently not so we will just slap this little tank right down next to it like so and we should be able to uh, to handle liquid fertilizer right here now too we'll open her up again yep there we go so we are all full of liquid fertilizer and seed so we've got dry fertilizer there we've got liquid fertilizer and um, 
and seed. And I think we might be able to get lime out of that too. So yeah, that's going to work out well for us. And you know, those little small tanks will replace our our uh, our previous ones from MF. You know what I'm talking about, the seed hut and the fertilizer hut. Now, as much as I like these bunker silos, and I really do, I think these are great mods. Um, we're gonna we're gonna bust them. We're gonna be bunker busters, and they are going away. This is the new technology that I was talking about. There's some new silage technology that I really want to try out. It makes life so much simpler, and if I can find our bunker silos, um, takes up far less room and makes our silage processing just that much easier. Oh, there we go. So we are going to sell those off. And again, I really do like them. I would recommend them for any farm. But we have other fish to fry. So one thing that I know we need, we are short on storage space, shed space right now, and I've got the perfect one I think is going to fit right here. And then I can get our harvesters put away. And it's this farm garage. It's big, nice wide open space. It's got basically a sunroof so that plenty of light will get in. And I just want to make sure it's straight. And no, this is not going to be another episode of uh, Barnyard Makeover. That that one that one um, wasn't quite as well received. Anyway, so there we go. We got a nice big storage shed. And that's going to work out great for all of our equipment. And last but probably not least, last for this episode anyway, um, I think it was in silos. And it is the Farming Innovations Fermenting Silo T800. And basically this is what it says it is. You dump in your, your chaff and it automatically processes your silage. Now is this as cheap as, um, as a bunker silo? No. But it will save us time because we don't have to fool around with compacting or anything. This silo will do that for us. And we're going to slap it over here because I want to keep some space open over here just in case I need another shed. But right now what we're going to do is get a worker planting. Um, I want to put oats in one field. No, I think it's going to be barley. Any the, anyway, I need something with straw because we are running low on straw. And that's going to need to happen. Actually, I think I do want the little case. Because I'm going to go get our old John Deere harvester, or cedar, and get a worker working on a field over there. The field by the grass field. What was that? Was that field 10? It's been, <laughs> it's, there's been so many things going on. Um, it's hard to keep track. After the big harvest down in the valley, I mean, our small fields don't compare to that, but that's okay. You know, our fields have served us really, really well. You know, they have produced everything that uh, has made our cows do as well as they have. In fact, I was looking today, and we are up to 252 cows. We started at 224, so we've had... 28 births. That's pretty outstanding. We are full of seed. I don't want to add fertilizer to this because we have so much slurry. And 
I also hauled about 180,000 liters of digestate up from the biogas plant, and it's in our storage facility also, in our multi-fruit silo. Um, yeah, I think I am going to go barley here. We haven't done barley. We've done wheat. We've done oats. We have plenty of oats in the silo now, too, um, to keep our horses well fed. I think we've got 60,000 liters, so that's going to last a good long time. And then let's switch back over to the big case. Our big new tractor. I love this tractor. I've probably said that a dozen times since I got it, but man, is that just, just a beast. Just wicked. Love it. I'm just silly enough to uh, to think that's incredibly amazing. No, I know I know how passionate people get about their farm equipment, and I I completely understand it. In this field and our little annex field that we created, um, I'm going to try sunflowers for a change. That's going to mean we need to buy some headers for our, our harvesters, but that's quite all right. I think we'll have the money. These probably won't come in until tomorrow anyway, and uh, or a few days. It might be a couple days before these come in. Anyway, um, we've got horses to sell tomorrow. I've got 120,000 liters of milk basically to sell, and uh, So that's going to bring in a good chunk of change. I mean, even if I sold it right now, it would be worth almost half a million dollars. So we are not hurting for money anymore. Our farm has become financially viable. Now, I did go ahead and sell off those soybeans. That was a good chunk of the money that we had to spend today, and that's kind of what I was planning for. I knew that we needed to get some things added back to the farm after I sold off some stuff. So, And I've, I know we've been short on storage for a while. We needed some shed shed space. So, Let me knock out the seeding on these two fields. I'll get this done. And um, then we're going to go tear up some corn. And you saw over there, I already did go ahead and lease the uh, the big crone forage harvester. So it's ready to go anytime. And I will see you in just a little bit when all these seeds are in.
And this should just about finish up the sunflower seeding. I do need to go check on field 10. Looked like our helper got done over there, but, uh, well, I think we all know how help helpers are these days. There we go. And that's it. That's done. And hey, I don't have to go very far to put this away. <laughs> Not far at all these days. Now the one thing that this shed is missing is lights. There are no lights in here. Um, it's got lots and lots of windows. Uh, oh, ah, ah, as I tear up our cedar planter. Planter cedar. <laughs> Whichever. Because it does everything. We don't have to have a separate piece of equipment with this. Alright, that'll do. All right, let's go over to field 10. And, oh yeah, looks like the worker did exactly what he or she was supposed to do, so. You can still see the remnants of our tree. Oh, ah, ee. man, I'm trying to tear up equipment today. Look at me go. I never did get back over here to take the stumps out. Um, not really that big of an issue. One of these days I'll get around to it, probably. And why is the cover open on that? So, let's, um, let's take care of some corn. I want to see what our, uh, how our new silo works. That's going to be interesting. If it's, as, if it's as functional as it says it is, it is going to make our silage needs much, much easier. Oh, why am I bringing this over here? Well, I'll put it over here. If I can move stuff over to the new shed later, it won't hurt to sit right here. In fact, I'll probably just back in and then park the whole tractor here for now. But yeah, I, I need to get... um to get some repair function or you know like a toolbox or I don't know maybe we'll look for an actual an actual building that uh, serves as a maintenance shop we'll see now one thing I want to check out real quick because this looks a little bit narrow I want to see how wide of a tractor trailer combination I can get through there. Well, it fits just barely, but it does fit. It looks like it's got some decent height on it. And there is a digital readout there to let us know exactly how much is, has been put in. Oh, and we get a nice little heads up display. It's going to tell us how much we've put in, and then this produces silage and digestate. So we're going to be getting a little digestate off this, too. That'll be helpful with our uh, slurry spreader. That will make a difference. At least I think it will. We're going to find out. Now, as weird as this may sound... I learned something new in Farming Simulator within the last day or two. And what that is, is that you don't have to wait for corn to be ready to harvest. You can chaff it in its final growing stage. And it doesn't really affect how much you uh, get out of the field. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this guy up to follow. And we are going to get in the crone. I thought I was in the crone, but I wasn't. Okay. And I, th I think he can just follow directly behind. And, uh... might not be such a good idea. Okay, so... We're going to put him at a right offset of seven and a half. And we're going to change his follow distance to five. Okay, we're going to change his follow distance. To slightly ahead. That's better. Much better. But, uh, yeah, a regular harvester wouldn't harvest, say, like a wheat field if it wasn't in the ready to harvest stage, but the forage harvesters will take stuff down and I think it's as early as the final growth stage, but I haven't tested it, so um, I could be slightly wrong. Like I said, I actually learned this little feature or function um, just a day or two ago and oddly enough, you know, I've harvested tons of cornfields but I have never uh, never done them early. I've always waited till they were ready to harvest before I chaffed them up. So it is what it is. And this time around, unlike the Corn is King episode, we don't appear to be having any problems. I, to this day, do not know what happened with that episode um, and why there were so many problems with the forage harvesters that day. But stuff happens. Now I'm just going to need to keep an eye on uh, the trailer. It looks like it's getting full, and I'll know when the forage harvester stops shooting chaff into it. But, you know, another thing about forage harvesters, they will mow down crops whether they have anywhere to put it or not. So, you know, even though it looks like it's, it's just going to cut it down, Unless it's got a place to to put it, it's just pretty much going to decimate it and you'll lose it all. So you do need to keep that in mind when you're doing forage on your corn. Or any other crop. You know, you can do whole crop forage harvesting. See, right there. That was it. going to let our worker go for the moment. We will go dump this in the new and improved silage silo. That's not a bunker silo.
I don't know if the digital readout there is working or not though because oh it's gonna tell us how much silage we have so let's take a look real quick and we got our heads up display yeah we've got 52,000 liters that we just put in and now we've got 150 liters of digestate and 2667 silage and yeah that's what the digital output displays so it's just telling us exactly how much silage we have interestingly enough and I believe that this new silo will hold a total capacity of 800,000 liters and that's combined between digestate or between yeah between silage and digestate so you know, if we've got 100,000 liters of digestate in there, then it will hold 700,000 liters of silage. That's my understanding of how that works. There we go. That's one thing about cattle and dairy cattle. You always need to keep a lot of silage on hand. I mean, you know, we've probably got a quarter million liters of TMR in the cattle feed at this point, And it's still showing that we're at a dangerously low level. So, you know, we'll probably need a million and a half liters in that thing before it's actually full. And probably another 250,000 liters in there before it shows us that we are at least at a safe capacity. So silage is going to be something, and that's true of actual real life dairy farms also. You know, silage is big business for them. They need it, and they make a lot of it. I've mentioned it before, but 10th Generation Dairyman has a great video of them uh, spending the day making silage and it's really similar to what we do in game there's not much difference to it whatsoever so at this point we are gonna knock out this cornfield and I will see you when it's all taken care of
So that's it. The corn is off the field. This is the last of the chaff. We're going to take a look at the silo and see exactly where we're at. If the if a previous harvest on this field prove anything, whoa! I don't know what I just got hung up on. That was funky. Anyway, if previous harvests prove anything, this should be right around 450,000 liters. 423,716. That's about right. I think 450 might have been just a little bit high, but... Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Now, the question that I have is... How do we get the silage out? It looks like there are fill spouts here. So if I were to pull back through... Yep, so it's going to let me fill silage right now. We've got about 25,000 liters. It doesn't fill real quick, but it's not bad. It could fill a little faster. But I'm not going to complain because I didn't have to spend 15 minutes uh, compacting. I didn't have to do anything except dump my silage. And by this time tomorrow, all that should be processed. Now I am interested in one other quick thing. I should have looked at this while I was there to begin with. But, uh... So, we had about 25,000 liters of silage, and that gave us 1,500 liters of digestate. So we're not getting a lot of digestate off of this. There is one thing that uh, I do recall from testing this just a little bit before I decided to use it, and that is that we're going to get the exact amount of silage out that we put chaff in. So the digestate is not going to take away from the silage at all. In fact, it's just kind of a bonus. So I'm not going to complain about that in the least. I will take it. And actually, I don't want to necessarily put the silage in the silo yet. In fact, I, I won't move it at all unless I'm going to take some down to the BGA to sell it. But I think since I've got a load here, I will go ahead and top off the uh, TMR machine. Looks like the TMR machine could use some direct maintenance, but that's, or, you know, direct filling anyway. But that's not going to happen today. Nope. The next thing that's going to happen today is that we're going to pull out the horse in just a minute our new slurry spreader and we're going to get some slurry back down on this cornfield. That's one nice thing about, you know, even though we're planting corn, we have to plow it. But because we have to plow it, we can get our slurry down first, plow that in, and then we can get almost automatically get a second layer of uh second layer of fertilizer on there as we're planting or seeding or you know if we want to want to plant or seed and then throw fertilizer down which we'll probably do because we have so much slurry and digestate now and I think I filled this thing up before before I parked it yeah it's full Whoa, I forgot that big lip was... I should fix that one of these days. That's kind of my famous saying now. Gotta fix that one of these days. And yeah, I'm not even uh, close to the width of this thing. One problem with big long booms like this is that it's really hard to line up the edge of the field. 
let's see, I'm sure that, uh, yeah, so this is telling me I'm off by two and a half feet. Let's try this. Let me check. Nope, that's not what I wanted to do. I want to show lines. See, that looks kind of good, but it's also showing that I'm off to the right just a little bit. You can kind of see that on the left. So that's one thing that GPS is also good for, is helping you get lined up to begin with. So I knew I didn't want to be offset. <laughs> and I knew I didn't want to back up the slurry spreader because I knew it was going to turn out something like this, but and now I'm off too far. God bless America. Okay, I just need to be off that center just a smidge. If I were to line up there, let's let's see what it tells me. Now I'm 2.8 feet in the other direction. No, that looks right. Doesn't that? That looks right. That says 0.66. I don't want an offset though, so... That's better. That's much better. That's perfect. Okay. So now we're going to turn this thing on. And it's ready to go. And we are active. Are we? Yep. Okay. We got slurry going down. And so we are just going to reprep this field and get corn right back in it now that we have our new silage silo. We got our fields planted and looks like they're starting to grow up a little bit already. But I think that's going to do it for this episode. So I'm just going to keep this going. I do appreciate you coming along for the ride. And if you enjoyed this episode, learned something new, found out something interesting, do me a favor and hit the like and subscribe buttons. And until next time, take care.